He's been called poetic, assertive, tender, the young pianist who won the Chopin International Piano Competition in 2015. Xiong Jin Cho plays Beethoven with Ed Gartner and the London Philharmonic Orchestra in London on uh, Wednesday. And he is here now. Lovely to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, I th think it is the uh, first time with the orchestra, the first time with um, Maestro Gardner as well. Yes, actually it's my first time to play with the orchestra and with Maestro Gardner as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you don't have nerves anymore, but even still, like a new introduction like that, when it's a whole new group of musicians, is that difficult? Is it a difficult moment? You mean the, the opening? Yeah, the opening or just yeah, the first rehearsal. Everyone knows that it's so magical and... So special, but I love this piece, be not because of this special opening, but uh, for me, this is the most unique concerto. Of You're talking about the Beethoven. I was actually yeah. talking about the whole experience. I experienced meeting, it. Me meeting everybody for the first time. Uh, first time. Both. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, thought I was glad to hear that you are going to have a magical time with the band. You will, of course. But. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course, the first experience is all, always interesting and sometimes demanding. And yeah, with this orchestra, I'm sure I'll have a good time and... I heard so many great things about the orchestra and the, Ed Gardner, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and I mean, so Beethoven, Beethoven as well, of course, uh, is, is very much in your in your repertoire now. Chopin, I think, still, but presumably you, you gave up Chopin for a moment or two, maybe after winning the competition, because you must have been living with him. Uh, well, yeah, right after I won the Chopin competition, it was natural that I had to play a lot of Chopin's music because... I, I won the competition, but I didn't want to be labeled as yeah. a Chopin specialist. So I, intentionally, I didn't play so much of Chopin. But now I came back and to Chopin's music, so I started playing again. Good. You never, no, don't get rid of him, definitely. Is it true that you told somebody once that nobody told you you were talented as a young pianist? Talented? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Did nobody say that, ever say that to you? Uh, well, when I was a when I was a kid, when I was in Korea, my teachers were very tough, so oh. they didn't give me any compliments. So, actually, I'm a little bit allergic to compliments. Okay, <laughs> well, so. I'm not going to be able to say what well, a real pleasure to listen, but I will. Will will <laughs> you, you could take it as read because your your performances have such such um, soaring uh, reviews. But you're playing Haydn. I know you've been in into the Baroque with your album on on Handel. But um, where does Haydn come now in your preferences? I to be honest, I was not a big fan of Haydn right. when I was a kid because I don't know the reasons but um, so many competitions they require <laughs> uh, to play the Haydn sonata when I was a kid so I practiced so much and but I started playing again and I found it to be so yeah. special and yeah. I think Haydn's music um, the sonatas especially they're not so often played these days but I think they deserve more attention. Yeah, they are wonderful. This is the Sonata in E Minor, book in 16, number 34, and I think we're getting the third movement. Um, the piano awaits you, Song Jin. Thank you very much. Just a small, small walk across the parquet.
Thank you very much indeed. I'm terrified to say that was lovely, just in case you don't accept the compliment. But it was playful, eloquent, all the elements. Xiong Jin Cho playing Haydn. You're going to come back and play something for us later. What have you chosen, or should we keep it a secret? Um, it's up to you. <laughs> okay. No, don't say anything. Let's uh, just keep hanging on the cliff, uh, because you'll know that will be superbly played. Brings the time here on Radio 3 to a quarter to six o'clock. Um, I hope you feel better after that. Just really wondrous balm. You're going to feel even better. My uh, guest, Xiong Jin Cho, is back to perform. He's won everything. Chopin, uh, international Chopin competition. I think uh, last year was the Samsung Ho Arm Prize, which is a big one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course it is. In Korea, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, I know you've been back playing Korea a couple of times. And uh, music in in Korea seems to be a, a young audience for classical music. Can you explain why? I also want to know why. Okay. <laughs> Whenever I perform in Korea, I could see so many young audience. And yeah. I think it's really great. No, it is really great. But there's all this question being posed as, well, a new audience is coming to classical music. And I think people come somehow by... By default, when they're ready, but it's, it's interesting that it's a whole new, it's a young generation as the mainstay there. I think I, I think they're very interested in performing arts in general. Yeah, not only about the classical music, but they also go to another like pop concerts a lot. So the K-pop is so popular, um, and also classical music. Um, I think it's very popular, and yeah, definitely the the audience age is much lower than. In Europe, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting. Uh, what, what, uh, there isn't an instant secret, of course, but once people have been to a wonderful performance, and a performance like yours, for instance, they, they're not the same again. You know, it just sort of enters, enters the heart. Uh, is there something you think of when you're about to perform with her? I know, I know imagination is, is, is a big part of it. I think your teacher, who was a pupil of Horowitz, said imagination is the key. It's hard to say, but... <laughs> um, okay, um... Well, like, in general, when I perform, I don't think about the audience so much. Maybe I'm being selfish, but I play for the composer and I play for myself. And, of course, I, I, I love sharing music with the audience. But, first of all, I really care about the yeah. composer the, the most. Well, that's the most important thing. Well, I know you've won Chopin. You talk about Chopin as being poetic. Beethoven, you're playing um, this week here in London as symphonic. Where do you place Ravel? Who are you going to play for us next? Uh, I'm, I'll be performing Ravel's Pavan. Yeah. So would you call him poetic? or? Oh, yeah. Um, his music is uh, poetic. And I'll, I'll be performing the complete Ravel's piano music next year for recital. Okay. And I've been I've been learning this uh, music, Ravel's music, since I was a kid, and and I studied in Paris, so it is quite natural for me. Yeah. And yeah, he. Uh, it is interesting to see how the how music has evolved through time, and his early work is totally different from his late yeah. work, like Don't Bon Coupon. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear the 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 uh, Pavan per enfant defunt, imagining a young princess dancing, maybe popping out of a painting by Velasquez. But he says it's 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 a Pavan for a dead princess. It's not a dead Pavan, so it's got to have elegance and yeah, life, dance, doesn't it? Yeah. Dance. Thank you. I'll let you dance your way to the piano, <laughs> Xiong Jin Cho. Thank you very much.
You've brought the dead and found it to life beautifully. Thank you. Sion Jin Cho playing Ravel. And the princess can now go back into her ebony and gilt frame. Thank you very much for making music for us. Uh, London Philharmonic Orchestra with Edward Gardner, soloist piano concerto number four by Beethoven. One of your favourites or not? Oh, it's yeah. on Wednesday, yes. Yes, <laughs> one of my favourites. Well, good, good, bon chance, because I know it's uh, it's the first time you're all getting together. And the Handel Project as well, of course. Uh, I'm sure you'll be coming back to more Baroque. Uh, yeah, maybe in the future. Maybe yes. in the future, OK. Put it down. Come and see us when you do. Thank you very much. Thank well. You.